from the KFOX 14 studios in El Paso and Las Cruces, it's the Emmy Award-winning KFOX 14 News at 9. Weeks after El Paso County Sheriff's deputies find a teenage girl dead in her San Elizario home, they arrest her ex-boyfriend and charge him with murdering her. Good evening, I'm John Purvis. I'm Erica Castillo. First on Fox Tonight, authorities say they found the body of 15-year-old Alejandra Arango in her home on the 12,700 block of Quijano. That's where KFOX 14 News and I's Gina Benitez joins us now from live. Neighbors in this area tell me Arango was a quiet girl who mostly kept to herself. Her body was found in that home here behind me almost a month ago, but her ex-boyfriend was just charged with her murder yesterday. My reaction was like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew that boy had something to do with it, or that man had something to do with it. I knew it. Call it a gut feeling or maybe keen intuition. Whatever it was, Salvador Aguirre can rest a little easier now. I got kids, so at first I thought uh, it's a scary situation. I didn't know exactly what was going on. I mean, everybody here was kind of kind of suspicious. El Paso County Sheriff's deputies arrested this man yesterday, 18-year-old Adrian Garcia. They say he murdered his 15-year-old ex-girlfriend, Alejandra Arango. I heard that uh, a little girl had uh, had committed suicide. I, I thought it, was, uh, it wasn't the story. Deputies first came to Arango's home three and a half weeks ago where they found Arango's body. After an autopsy was done, the medical examiner ruled Arango's death a homicide and authorities moved in on Garcia. It just didn't sound right it didn't it didn't sound right and everything that i had heard about the boyfriend as the boyfriend was kind of shady arango was supposed to start her sophomore year here at san elisario high school garcia had just graduated from the school this past year authorities have not said how arango died but a speculation in this quiet community continues i heard that it was an overdose and then i heard that she was uh, found uh, um, in the bathroom so i suspected that that maybe it was the boyfriend that that had uh, been doing drugs with her. The sheriff's office says they won't release the affidavit with more details on the case until Tuesday of next week. Now, grief counselors will be on hand at San Elisario High School for anyone who needs them. Reporting live in San Elisario, Gina Benitez, KFOX 14 News at 9. Meantime, El Paso County Sheriff Richard Wiles says it may be time to relook at domestic violence laws. Wiles says when the laws were first created, they were intended mostly to protect people bound by marriage or family ties. But Wiles says as troubling as it is, domestic violence spills over into the dating world far more often than people know or care to realize. You start finding a lot of the same things show up that you see in those family relationships, the the jealousy, the control, the anger, the lack of patience, and and you would see some of these things, uh, assaults and homicides that you would see in the family relationships. Weil says as parents and adults, we have an obligation to watch our kids and make sure we know who they are hanging out with. Weil says there are resources and nonprofits that are focused on preventing dating violence. DNA evidence connects an alleged local serial rapist in El Paso to a rape in Fort Worth. KFOX 14 and our media partners, the El Paso Times, were there exclusively as Arturo Valtiera Payan was walked into the El Paso County Jail to be booked last night. Police investigators say they have connected the so-called Manhattan Heights sexual predator to three local sexual assaults and one in Fort Worth. Valtiera Payan was first arrested in July in connection to one case of rape and burglary. Once his DNA was entered into the database system, he was charged with the other assaults. Detectives in Fort Worth and El Paso are now working together. A man is in serious condition tonight after U.S. Drug Enforcement agents shoot him in broad daylight near a West Side shopping center. KVOX 14 News and 9's Bill Malugin talked to the DEA to find out why agents felt they had to shoot. Officers in tactical gear armed to the teeth and a circling helicopter. It's not your everyday sight at the Coles off of Desert Boulevard and Red Road in northwest El Paso. DEA officials say they were conducting an operation this morning, but things went south when they moved in to arrest their target and he got into a vehicle. He broke the containment and attempted to flee, at which time the agent's lives were threatened and they fired their weapons. Bystander Roy Sinclair feels the DEA did the right thing. I'm sure the guy ran to the shopping center, and if he's going to give the, the law any trouble, why, if they have to shoot him, shoot him. I don't care. If they, it's better in the daylight. They can see what's behind him. 
Traffic near the area came to an absolute standstill as police blocked off part of Desert Boulevard and as many people turned their heads to try to see what was going on. It's a lot of traffic here. At the, it's because I think the shooting, but uh, yeah, it's slow. The DEA says although shooting in a shopping center sounds dangerous to the public, they made sure nobody was in harm's way. It was a pretty specific location where there was not um, any outside civilians located at the time. Um, and like I said, we always try to use an area with little uh, and is with the least amount of people around. You shoot a guy, why shoot him to wound, shoot to wound him? If you, you know, if, if you feel threatened, you have a right, I believe, to shoot back or to shoot, you know, same high level of violence. Bill Malugin, KFOX 14, News at 9. In addition to the man who was shot, the DEA took an unknown number of other suspects into custody without incident. A Fort Bliss soldier is one of two men facing federal charges for allegedly smuggling as many as 19 immigrants into the U.S. Homeland Security investigators say Specialist Carlos Vivas Feliciano admits to smuggling the people through New Mexico. He was allegedly working with another man, Gerald Espinosa. Agents say Vivas told them he brought five groups of immigrants from Columbus, New Mexico to one of two drop off points in Albuquerque and was paid $2,500 per group. A Las Cruces police officer accused of sexually assaulting a teen girl in his patrol car resigns. Detective Michael Garcia was arrested for two felony sex crimes. He allegedly assaulted a 17-year-old student during a ride-along in his police car. Garcia posted a $20,000 bond last week and was released from the Doniana County Detention Center. According to court documents, he has admitted to the crimes. Autopsy reports reveal a man killed by the Las Cruces Police Department may have provoked the shooting. As KFOX 14 has reported, officers killed Jose Ramon Estrada last month after he allegedly pointed what looked like an assault rifle at them outside his home. Turns out the weapon was a pellet gun. The suspect died from two gunshot wounds. Reports say officers first shot the suspect with beanbag rounds, but when he pointed the gun at them, all three officers fired. Police first arrived to Estrada's home after receiving a domestic violence call. Estrada was reportedly a diagnosed schizophrenic. The U.S. Lone Star Fugitive Task Force arrests a man wanted on forgery charges. Christopher Giles was listed as one of El Paso's most wanted fugitives. He's been arrested and convicted of four various other felony offenses. His bond is set at $16,000. Jurors decide the sentence for a man they found guilty of causing a crash that killed an El Paso police officer. The jury sentenced Alejandro Fierro to six months in jail, followed by probation. Plus, he must pay a total of $22,000 in fines. KVOX 14 News at 9, Stacey Welsh tells us why Fierro's attorneys called the sentence bittersweet. I'm sorry for your loss. That's what Alejandro Fierro said to the late officer Carl McDonough's mother during her emotional victim impact statement. The defense argued Fierro could still continue his life as a student and work at a part-time job if sentenced to minimal jail time. The tragedy that overwhelmed this courtroom this week and the emotions that were charged in there will never be forgotten. But he was pleased with the jury's decision. The day was full of emotional testimony and many fought back tears. Fierro cried as his father described him as a role model for his younger brother. The prosecution argued Fierro can't take back his actions the night Officer McDonough died and Officer Ricardo Lopez was injured. Assistant District Attorney Ray Duke says, quote, the main issue is if Mr. Fierro would have made the right decision to not drink and drive. It is a crime and it has to be punished. It's possible Fierro could still serve more jail time if he violates his probation. Stacy Welsh, KFOX 14 News at 9. Right now, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office has Fierro in custody. Fierro could also post $5,000 bond to get out of jail while his defense team appeals the sentence. Happening overnight, an El Paso man dies when his car strikes a pole in northeast El Paso. The accident happened just after 2 this morning on Dyer. Police say the driver died at the scene. They believe speed was a factor in this crash, but have yet to determine whether alcohol played a role. A man suffers third-degree burns early this morning after he's involved in a fiery crash. El Paso police tell KFOX 14 Javier Fernandez uh, was driving his car in the parking lot of an East El Paso McDonald's when he crashed into a concrete wall just after 3 a.m. His car burst into flames. Officers say Fernandez was trapped inside. He was taken to Del Sol Medical Center and then flown to the Lubbock Burn Center. A passenger in the car was not hurt. 90-degree heat returned today. 
Chief Meteorologist Sandra Diaz is in our KFOX 14 Severe Weather Center to let us know if it's going to get any hotter. Oh, yes it is, unfortunately, Erica. In fact, officially we hit our average for today, our high and our low with temperatures right at 91 and 68 degrees. As we take a look outside right now in El Paso, we have 82 degrees with partly cloudy skies. And in Las Cruces, well, we're in the upper 70s. And as we head through our Labor Day weekend, you'll see we will continue with this heat as temperatures warm to the lower to mid 90s for our Saturday, Sunday and Monday but rain chances return by Monday. How long this rain will last is still ahead. A group of Republican legislators is asking a state district court in southern New Mexico to stop a county clerk from issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. An attorney for the GOP state lawmakers filed a lawsuit in Las Cruces today. As KFOX 14 first reported, Doniana County Clerk Lynn Ellens started issuing marriage licenses to gay and lesbian couples last week. Since then, five other New Mexico counties have followed his lead. KFOX 14 tried contacting the county clerk for a response, but he was out of the office. The state auditor's office says the Texas Education Agency doesn't have the ability to discover cheating on school accountability standards. The state says the TEA relies on school districts to police themselves, which is what has essentially happened in El Paso County. Outside auditors hired by local school districts found problems that were never detected by the TEA. In response, the TEA announced it will establish an Office of Complaints, Investigations, and School Accountability to investigate cheating allegations within school districts. It confirms the fact that TA has been incompetent in what they've uh, set out to do. Um, not only did they fail to identify EPISD twice, we internally had to do uh, our own investigation to find out these issues. As we've reported, Texas Education Commissioner Michael Williams stripped the El Paso School Board of Trustees of its powers because of EPISD's cheating scandal and appointed a board of managers. The president of EPISD's elected board, Isela Castañón Williams, released a statement in which she calls for a federal investigation of the TEA and what she calls its inability to provide adequate oversight of federal and state accountability standards. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office is asking for an $11 million increase in next year's budget. The increase would include money for a narcotics unit that had its federal grant money cut. That money is three times what the county has allocated for the department. County commissioners are considering their options right now as they also weigh the possibility of having to replace the jail. The challenge for the county is that we only generate revenue um, from property taxes and, and a little bit from sales taxes. Um, uh, we don't really have uh, many fees, um, you know, like for example, the city, you know, can uh, give you a ticket for driving while on, on your cell phone. They can impose those things, you know, the, they can uh, increase parking fees on the street. The county really doesn't have any, any of those. Betta says some of the increases are contractual, such as the salary increases, and that accounts for three and a half million of the four million that is budgeted. County commissioners have not yet approved the budget for 2014. From our exclusive Washington Bureau, President Obama says the use of chemical weapons in Syria threatens U.S. national security interests, especially if no action is taken. The president also says a military response will not mean U.S. troops on the ground in Syria. His comments followed a forceful presentation by Secretary of State John Kerry, who says the credibility of the U.S. is at stake and Syria cannot go unpunished. There's a certain uh, suspicion of uh, any military action uh, post Iraq. We know where the rockets were launched from and at what time. The administration released an intelligence report saying more than 1,400 Syrian civilians were killed in last week's chemical weapons attack and more than 400 of the victims were children. United Nations weapons inspectors have now finished gathering their evidence and will leave Syria tomorrow. Doctors say wine is good for more than the heart. The reason it may also be good for your mental health. A beating on a school bus caught on camera. The sentence three teens now face in the apology letters they gave to a judge. Starting next year, all car owners will pay more for their vehicle registration in El Paso County. What the county plans on using the extra money toward. Next on KFOX 14 News at 9, coverage you can count on. 
Fort Bliss holds an ammunition amnesty day for El Paso County today. The aim is to control and account for small arms ammunition and explosives that have been found misplaced or stolen. Post officials say it also helps prevent injuries from the ammunition. They hope both soldiers and civilians will turn in ammunition without fear of punishment from the government. Uh, they collected ammunition at the Texas Army National Guard Armory in Northeast El Paso. Family and friends can once again visit inmates at the El Paso County Jail downtown. Uh, the county sheriff's office says uh, tomorrow and Sunday visitation will follow the normal weekend schedule. As KFOX 14 has reported, the county had to close the downtown jail to visitors for the past two weeks while crews performed maintenance and removed mold. Registering your vehicle in El Paso County just got a little bit more expensive. County commissioners voted today to raise the registration fee by $10. The money will reportedly be used to pay for transportation projects in the county. What the legislation called for was that that money be used for transportation projects. So the county will now have to um, identify the specific transportation projects. And you saw on the map today those major arterials that the county is going to focus on first. The increase goes into effect January 1st, 2014. The Texas Transportation Commission gives its final approval to up to $800 million to complete Loop 375. The project will extend the road from just east of downtown where it meets U.S. Highway 54, south of downtown, and then to Sunland Park Drive. Funds for the project will be available September of next year. The commission approved the Loop 375 project as part of its 2014 Unified Transportation Program. Protesters gather outside the Mexican consulate in downtown El Paso. They came out this morning to commemorate International Day of the Disappeared and to call on the Mexican government to do more to find the thousands of people who have disappeared in Mexico since the war between drug cartels broke out. In this month, we turned two years that we haven't seen my aunt. Um, they took her away from us and basically we have no answer. We don't know where she's at. There are about 26,000 missing persons reports sitting in Mexico's federal database. President Enrique Peña Nieto has promised the Mexican government will do more to try and find those who have disappeared. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused a drilling rig to explode in Texas. Flames were so intense, fire commanders just planned to let the fire burn out. All rig personnel were immediately evacuated and were later accounted for. To contain the flames, a specialized team of suppression firefighters out of Houston were called in to help with the blaze. One man who lives just a mile and a half from the site relives the moment. It smelled like oil. You could hear the rumbling, the pressure, all the pressure from the fire and crackling. And Authorities say it could take as long as a week for it to burn out. A storm dumped several inches of rain on San Bernardino County, California. Take a look at the aftermath. Hills are washed away. Roads filled with mud, rock, and debris. About 1,500 people in the community cannot leave or get into their homes, but the good thing is there are no injuries reported. Verbal assault on a public transit bus. It just really was scary. When somebody threatens to kill you and you don't know who they are and you're on the bus. The reason police say this may be a hate crime. Back to school means back to the field for a lot of young athletes. I'm Stephanie Guadion. Helmets can save lives. Tips on how to make sure you get the right fit in tonight's Health Watch. Temperatures are back on the rise. I'll let you know if we'll have any rain to ease the heat next on KFOX 14 News at 9. The holiday weekend is here and law enforcement is out in full force and it sounds like the sun is going to be out in full force too. Here's Sandra in the KFOX 14 Weather Center. Absolutely, Erica. This weekend, a great weekend. Lots of activities going on. We have high school football starting up again. We have the canyon. We have tons of things to go do outdoors and if you are going to be outdoors, your luck. You're not really going to see much rain because dry air is circulating around this big area of high pressure just to our north. Winds circulate clockwise. So right now what we have is all that orange and black. That's dry air being transported closer towards us and you can see all that moisture slowly beginning to push westward as a result. So what we have right now when we take a look at our KFOX early warning storm track Doppler 
It's quiet out there. No rain anywhere nearby, and I don't anticipate on seeing any. Although we have high dew points, that high pressure is really keeping a lid on the atmosphere. It suppresses it, but as it suppresses it, it warms things up and it keeps our winds light. And boy, that's exactly what we saw today. Temperatures feel a little warm out there, especially when you compare them to the last couple of nights at this hour. 78 right now in Las Cruces, 82 in El Paso, 85 in Dell City. And those winds, they're less than 10 miles per hour. Here's what we do have. High pressure to the north, slowly sinking its way closer to us. The closer it gets, the stronger of a grip it has on our forecast, leaving us with more light winds, dry conditions, and as I mentioned, warmer temperatures. Now we still have some residual moisture that could spark off a shower or two in the mountain areas for your Saturday. By Sunday, it starts to begin its retreat back to the north. Still, Sunday morning looks great. Eagle in the sun, no problems weather-wise. I hope you're ready. As it moves north, though, a cold front begins to approach the borderland. We'll start to get moisture back in the area, and once that front comes through on Monday, what we're going to be dealing with is an increase in rain, and that is because moisture behind this system will now shift out of the southeast, and that is going to bring moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. So rain chances go up for your Labor Day. I know, a lot of people don't want to hear that, but at least you're ready, right? Okay, 72 tonight in El Paso, 95 tomorrow afternoon. Tonight in Las Cruces, 67, just a few clouds hanging out. Highs tomorrow, still pretty warm though, mid 90s, and with a muggy day ahead of us. Here's what we can expect though. Temperatures staying in the mid 90s this weekend. Overnight lows in the lower to mid 70s in El Paso, upper 60s in Las Cruces, rain possibilities by Sunday, only a 10% later in the day. And as I mentioned, once that front moves through, we'll start to see a better chance for some showers and storms all beginning on Labor Day. How long they're going to last into next week's weather is in your five day forecast with the weekend always in view. Caught on camera, a judge punching other judges in court. We'll show you what happened in Mexico in tonight's KFOX 14 World View. A new warning on one of the popular over-the-counter medications, the reason Tylenol is revamping its bottle. Defense attorneys for former New England Patriots tied in Aaron Hernandez head to court why a judge doesn't make a decision on the motions they filed. Next on KFOX 14 News at 9, coverage you can count on. Concerned citizens from across the city gather tonight for a bicycle ride to remember fallen bicyclists. Floyd Trey Hancock, Terrence Patrick Harvey, and Jose Cordova all died while riding their bikes this month. Critical Mass El Paso, a local bike group, led the memorial ride. The ride began at Union Plaza Park, ending at the intersection of Rayner and Jefferson, where nine-year-old Cordova died last week. Former New England Patriots tied in Aaron Hernandez appears before a judge today. His defense team filed motions in his murder case, but the judge says he will not make a decision on the motions just yet. You are both of those. I read both of the motions. Uh, I'm not going to take any action at this point that would adversely affect Mr. Hernandez. He's going to be remain in Superior Court next week. Hernandez was indicted last week for first degree murder in the death of his friend Odin Lloyd. He's scheduled to be arraigned on September 6th. A father shoots and kills his one year old son with a BB gun. Officers in Atlanta say the father will likely face charges, but they haven't revealed the circumstances of the shooting or whether it was an accident. Neighbors say they saw the father running from the apartment yelling for help. I just heard him saying, uh, when he ran out here, I heard him saying he was just playing with his son and something like he wasn't trying to and he didn't know he had a BB in it or whatever. But it's a sad tragedy that this had to happen to a one-year-old child. Police say three adults and three children were home at the time of the shooting. Check out this surveillance video as it captures a shootout in a Florida home. You can see a white SUV drive by and then suddenly some suspects running through the streets. Police believe the men you see running were riding in that SUV. 
At the time of the shooting, a woman and her four children were sleeping in their home. Police say the men used a handgun and an assault rifle to fire at the home. No one was injured. A bus passenger threatens to kill another rider during a tirade. The bus driver tried to intervene, but it didn't matter. The passenger said she was ready for a fight. She gets out of her seat, and that's when the man next to her tried to calm her down. That only made things worse. As she approached the victim, she threatened to kill her. She said she was not speaking to me, referred to me as a female dog several times, um, also threatened to kill me, said that she would kill me, um, said that uh, she would cut me, and started to take an object out of her purse. And it was, it was alarming. Officers say they were going to charge the woman with misdemeanor assault. However, because of the racial slang she used to threaten the woman, they're now investigating it as a possible hate crime. Three Florida teens are sentenced to indefinite probation after admitting they beat a classmate on a school bus. That beating was caught on surveillance video. In court, the teens handed the judge apology letters and blamed their actions on peer pressure after they say the victim wrongly accused them of selling drugs. I listened to what somebody else told me. I was being a follower. I was angry. I felt disrespected because something was said that about me that wasn't true. One of the defendant's grandmothers says she actually thinks her grandson and the other two boys should have been locked up for a few weeks. A train derails in Washington, D.C., making it a nightmare for commuters. The train was being moved from one rail yard to another when it derailed. Crews could be seen at the accident site trying to clean up the mess. The cause of the derailment is under investigation, but no one was injured. Check this out as a bulldozer goes up in flames in Florida. The equipment caught fire at a construction site near the central gate near Miami International Airport. Firefighters did arrive to extinguish it. New protests in Egypt and a Mexican judge is caught on camera attacking fellow judges. These stories and more in tonight's KFOX 14 World View. Violent clashes erupt in Egypt as tens of thousands of Muslim Brotherhood supporters rally across the country, defying the military and its bloody security crackdown. Tanks and armored police vehicles bar the protesters from converging in major squares. Many threw stones at supporters of the military government, while security forces responded with tear gas. A judge loses his patience and attacks two fellow judges in court. Mexican Justice Miguel Angel Falcón gets caught on camera lashing out during a hearing at the Morelos State Appeals Court. The judge shouted obscenities as his, at his colleagues just before the assault. Falcón says he regrets his actions and is sorry for the attack, but witnesses in the courtroom say he should resign. A spokesman for the Morelos State Appeals Court says Falcón now faces possible impeachment. Who knew bobcats could be so shy? Four newborn desert lynxes keep to themselves as they're introduced to the world for the first time today. The two male and two female cats were born at the Animal Park Zoo in Berlin just over a month ago. It's a first for their parents who arrived from South Africa in 2004 and have since had twins and triplets but never quadruplets. A zookeeper says it's very rare to have quadruplet lynxes. And that's tonight's KFOX 14 World View. Wow, I don't know, but what's cooler, a baby lynx or a tree house really high up in the air. <laughs> the clever invention to reach this 30-foot tree house. Labor Day weekend has begun for most of us. Some safety tips before you head out the door. Student athletes will soon be hitting the field. I'm Stephanie Guadion. The number one thing you can do to help save lives. That's next on KFOX 14 News at 9. The following Health Watch segment is brought to you by the Sierra Providence Robotic Surgery. The CDC and Prevention reports up to 170,000 young athletes go to the ER every year for possible traumatic brain injuries. Experts at Mayo Clinic are teaming up with high school coaches to make football safer. 15-year-old Tyler Sloan, number 17, is no stranger to concussions. This felt like a big hit until I got in the locker room after the game, then my head started to hurt, and 
just felt nauseous and knew something wasn't right. Gary is the head football coach at the local high school. He's also president of the Minnesota Football Coaches Association. His goal in that position. We're trying to make the game safer. Gary's teamed up with experts at Mayo Clinic to make sure players' helmets are in good condition and fit properly. No helmet can eliminate um, the possibility of a concussion happening, but the idea of a properly fitted helmet and a good helmet is to reduce the severity um, of a concussion if it should happen. Mayo Clinic athletic trainer Jim Williams demonstrates how to make sure a helmet fits the way that it should. First, I'm going to check the helmet um, for any kind of cracks, any kind of loose uh, snaps, clips, face mask is nice and tight. Then measure the player's head one inch above the eyebrow. Next, spray the player down to simulate sweat during a game. When the helmet is on, it should be one inch above the eyebrow. If it's too low, pump air into the air bladders inside the helmet. Chin straps, you want to make sure you go underneath the face mask. I want to make sure that the ear holes line up with the ear. I want to make sure that the back of the head is covered. And the pads inside the helmet should be in good shape. Replace them if they're not. A good snug fit, but not a fit that's too tight that could cause a headache after 30 to 40 minutes out on the field. A good fit means the helmet doesn't slide around. You can see the skin is basically moving with the helmet, which is what we want. Two or three days after the fitting, check it again. Every week thereafter, give it a once over. Again, helmets will not stop concussions from happening. If we can reduce them as much as possible, you know, we feel like we're doing a better job for the kids. The coach says all schools and sports clubs should replace helmets after 10 years of use, no matter what manufacturer's requirements are. With tonight's Health Watch report, I'm Stephanie Guadion. A glass of wine a day may help avoid depression. Researchers say people who drank two to seven glasses a week were least likely to suffer from depression. The findings remain consistent even after researchers adjusted for lifestyle factors such as smoking, diet, and marriage. Study authors say while excessive wine or alcoholic drinking may be a sign of depression or other health problems, drinking in moderation may benefit mental health. New Tylenol bottles will hit store shelves in October with a brand new warning label. The cap will have bright red lettering saying contains acetaminophen. Always read the label. It will appear on extra strength Tylenol. The medication has always had a warning, but now Johnson & Johnson, which makes Tylenol, is trying to get consumers to actually read the warning. It's part of a push to prevent people from overdosing on the pain reliever. One airline carrier is going high tech. The new onboard distraction for passengers. Everyone needs a boost of energy now and then, but there's one KFOX 14 consumer advisor Clark Howard says you should stay away from. That's straight ahead. Every now and then, we run into situations where we need a boost of energy. KFOX 14 consumer advisor Clark Howard tells us about one product that critics say is not so powerful. Everywhere you go now, it seems there's something that is licensed by or endorsed by someone. And there's been a controversy going on in the NBA over these energy bracelets that have NBA seals and have players tied into them. And this is a revenue opportunity for the NBA. The idea is you wear these bracelets and somehow suddenly you're a more powerful, energetic you. Well, Mark Cuban, the controversial owner of the Dallas Mavs, says baloney, these things don't work, and the NBA shouldn't be selling itself down the river to score some money. So let me tell you my advice for you. Just because you see something with some smiling celebrity endorsing it, or you see something that has some logo on it that really excites you, don't throw away your common sense. You really need to know, are the claims being made there true? Is a celebrity standing there saying something's great a reason you should buy it? No. Do your homework. I'm Clark Howard. If you're traveling this Labor Day weekend, the Red Cross has some safety tips for you. Make sure you have an emergency supply kit in your trunk and let someone know where you plan to go and when you expect to arrive. If you're going for a swim, check the weather and water conditions and always swim with a buddy. For more safety tips, the American Red Cross has a first aid app for smartphones and tablets. Gas prices are going up this Labor Day weekend. That's because 
Oil prices are near a two-year high. AAA reports a gallon of regular gas is up about two cents this week, but it's still a lot cheaper than it was last Labor Day weekend, almost 20 cents per gallon less. El Paso still has the cheapest gas in Texas at an average of $3.33 for a gallon of regular. KFOX 14 can help you find the best deals at the gas pump. Just go to KFOXTV.com and click on our gas tracker under the traffic tab. A federal judge sets a tentative trial date for the federal government's challenge to the American Airlines U.S. Airway merger. The two sides will face off in court on November 25th. The U.S. Justice Department filed a lawsuit in mid-August to block the airline merger. The government argues the merger would lead to higher prices for consumers, but the companies say the merger would make them more competitive and strengthen the market. Starting Sunday, Hawaiian Airlines passengers will have a new onboard distraction, the iPad Mini. The carrier will offer in-flight rentals on 14 routes between Hawaii and the continental U.S., Asia, and the South Pacific. The iPads are free for business class travelers. If you're in coach, you can reserve one in advance for $15 or in-flight for $17. The devices will give passengers access to a variety of movies, TV shows, and games. After playing their very last game, they had planned to hold a silent auction. But we'll tell you why that auction of El Paso Diablo's memorabilia has been called off. Lots of activities going on this weekend. How much hotter we will be is in your five-day forecast with a weekend always in view. Coming up on KFOX 14 News at 9. A silent auction planned for tomorrow to sell off El Paso Diablo's memorabilia has been canceled. That's because the owner of the city's new AAA baseball team, Mountain Star Sports Group, today bought up all the memorabilia after the man who owned the Diablos during their heyday in minor league baseball, Jim Paul, was allowed to reclaim the memorabilia that was most important to him. And the new owners of the AAA team will build areas in the new ballpark to display that so that we we have a feel for our history of professional baseball all the way back to the 1900s. In a statement, the general manager of El Paso's new AAA baseball team, Brad Taylor, said, quote, this will allow us to help preserve the rich history of El Paso baseball. Hopefully it can all be displayed in one place so everybody can enjoy it, end quote. It's a treehouse 30 feet up in the air and it comes with certain challenges like how to reach it. The man who made the treehouse came up with a creative solution. Check it out, it's a bicycle elevator. The pedals go forward and you go up and you sort of rappel down with weight and gravity. In a New Zealand wildlife park, humans are the ones in cages. Check that out. Visitors at the Orana Wildlife Park get a unique experience by going into a lion enclosure on the back of a truck. The zoo has offered this opportunity to get a really up close look at these big cats since 1999. I don't know. You don't want to sign up for that I one? I don't think so. <laughs> now Sandra has your five day forecast for the weekend always in view. Sign me up, where am I at? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at your forecast. We are in for a hotter day tomorrow. We'll even start to see a stray shower here and there on Sunday with a better chance on Monday and Tuesday. You'll see though, temperatures will be in the 90s for the next week out as well with those overnight temperatures in the 70s. And we have an update on tonight's top stories next on KFOX 14 News at 9. A man found guilty of killing an El Paso police officer in a car crash could serve less than six months in jail. Plus how much money and fines he'll have to pay. A shooting in broad daylight at a West Side shopping center puts a man in the hospital, why DEA agents are involved, and why they say it was in self-defense. Gina. Sheriff's deputies charge a man with the murder of his 15-year-old ex-girlfriend. Why neighbors in this area say it comes as no surprise. 
If you're just joining us, we have tonight's top stories and tomorrow's forecast starting right now. El Paso County Sheriff's deputies charge a Sanelli man with murder after they say he killed his 15-year-old ex-girlfriend. KFOX 14 News at 9's Gina Benitez joins us from San Elizario. Authorities found the body of 15 year old Alejandra Arango in this home behind me on August 5th. Now, almost a month later, her ex boyfriend is charged with her murder. Neighbors tell me the death seemed suspicious from the start. They say initially Arango was rumored to have committed suicide. That is until yesterday when investigators say they had enough evidence to charge 18 year old Adrian Garcia. The sheriff's office says they won't release the arrest affidavit detailing the crime until Tuesday. John. A man is in serious condition at a local hospital tonight after he's shot by DEA agents this morning. Officials say they were conducting an operation at the Coles department store near Desert Boulevard and Red Road when their target tried to flee in a vehicle. Agents say they felt threatened, so they shot the man an unknown number of times. Two other suspects were arrested without incident. A man found guilty of causing a crash that killed an El Paso police officer is sentenced to six months in jail. When he completes that sentence, Alejandro Fierro will have to be on probation. There's a possibility he could do more jail time if he violates it and it's revoked. A jury also sentenced him to pay a total of $22,000 in fines. Right now, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office has Fierro in custody. Fierro could also pose $5,000 bail to get out of jail until the defense appeals the sentence. All right, let's take one more look at that holiday weekend forecast, and you'll see those highs. They're going to be warmer this weekend. In fact, we're going to be dealing with temperatures in the lower to mid 90s all weekend long and into your Labor Day. But we will start to see rain chances back in the forecast. A 10% chance on your Sunday, up to a 30% chance by Monday. Thanks, Sandra, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm John Purvis. I'm Irafa Castillo. Be sure to have a safe and wonderful Labor Day weekend, and be sure to join us tomorrow for KFOX 14 News at 9.